Hey everybody, this is Chris from Console Customs. Today I'm going to take you through the installation of our new True Fire Flex version 4 mod. This mod is an update from our version 3 right there to support the new Sony controllers which have the connection pads out on the sides. So with this mod you do not need to worry about which controller version you have. It will work with both of them. When you order a kit from us uh, depending on what you order, if you order from a website, you can choose what comes with it. If you order on eBay or Amazon, it's going to come by default with some wire, uh, a small PH00 Phillips screwdriver, and a button. So, we'll start with, uh, this is an older controller, an older soldering controller, white one. We'll take our Phillips screwdriver and open this up. So with our screws removed, now we can just pop the back cover off. It's easiest just to grab by the handles and pull. You'll hear some popping, just the clips inside releasing. But you do want to be careful because there is inside a ribbon cable which goes from the front to the back half that just pulls right out of the front half so we can set that part of the shell aside. Now to get our battery out, take our screwdriver and it's held in by two clips in the top corners so if we just Push those clips to the side. You can, there's a battery holder here in the battery. And we are going to remove the battery. That is the safest way to work on our controller. So I just grab that with some side cutters, grab the actual plug, not the wires, and pop that out. All right, now with that apart, We'll take our Phillips screwdriver again and remove this one screw right in the middle of the board. And also we need to remove this small ribbon cable which is for the touch pad. This white part here just flips up. So with that flipped up we can pull that cable out. And now our board will just flip over. So here, right in the center there, you can see where our mod makes its connections. But as you can see, if we put that in there, we have all this extra stuff. So what we need to do is just cut off the parts that we don't need. So we've marked that with some white lines. So we're basically going to cut off these two wings. Just like that. And that. So now we can install this in our controller. With this mod, we use the touchpad for a lot of things, so we connect to this touchpad button right here. And there's a small, get it in focus, solder pad right there labeled TP for the touchpad. So this is only one of three solder connections that you need to make for a basic installation. And what we are going to do, we find it easiest, is to tin both this connection and the button before we put it in. So basically we're just going to add some solder to that little pad. And on here, it's the bottom leg on this button. So we'll just add a little bit of solder to both places. Now when we put it in, the only thing we need to do is make sure we line up the holes. So we want to make sure our holes are lined up with the mod and the board. So once we have that done, it looks like that. 
And now we're all done with that side of the board. That's all we need to do. Flip it over, put it back in. And we will put our ribbon cable back in for the touchpad. Flip that little white lever back over and put our screw back in. Okay, now we just need to take the mod, flip it over, and you could either use a little bit of tape, but I like to take a dab of hot glue Put it right behind the board here. And we want to lay that down so that this LED lines up real nice with the edge of the board. Just like that. So the only other solder connections we need to make for a basic installation are to the thumbsticks R3 and L3. So we have two pads labeled R3 and L3. Those are the two there I just tinned. And I'll do the same for where they will connect in the controller. So here we have to use a little bit of wire. And after I have these in, I'll give you guys a close-up. Now, as I said, this is just a basic installation. You can add up to three buttons to this mod. One of those buttons being what we call the mod button, which can turn on the rapid fire and other functions faster than the default method which is using left on the d-pad and the two other buttons <clears throat> are what we call reflex buttons so these buttons um, which connect up here are M1 and M2 that's for the reflex buttons those allow you to add buttons on the back of your controller like an X or circle so you can jump or or crouch without actually having to hit these buttons. So you can just push buttons that you put on the back of the controller. And those buttons are programmable so they don't have to be just X or circle. You can set them to be any button you want. Any trigger, any button, thumbstick clicks, D-pad direction, touchpad, any of those buttons. Alright, so here's our mod. This is actually completely installed with a basic installation. So, got our R3 connected over here and L3 over here. So, at this point, if we want to, we can be done with our controller. So, for this one, that's all we're going to do. We'll put the uh, battery back in. reconnect the ribbon cable for the back of our controller and we can close it up. So with our mods when you're using the controller you'll actually see a light in the very corner of the controller that's uh, where the light shows up for our mod so that will flash when you have rapid fire on or just have a single flash of red or green when you turn other features on and off. But that's uh, basically it for the, for the easy installation using left on the D-pad to turn rapid fire on and off. Now we will get into one of the new controllers. I've already removed the screws from this one. So same thing, ribbon cable to the back of the controller. And again, the 
battery is held in by two clips in the corners. And we'll pop that guy up. So these open a little bit different. We still have a screw here. There's no latch on the ribbon cable for the touchpad. It just pulls straight out. And the board's not going to come out yet because there's actually still clips on the sides here. Right there and there. And on the other side top and bottom there. So we need to release those before we can remove this board. Alright, with those released we can see our board and you can see the major difference in this style. There's no connection pads in the middle. It is on both sides. So we will take another one of our mods and this time we will cut off the center part here and you want to be very certain that you cut on the lines here because if you cut too high especially with this one you may actually cut off some of the connections that go out to the side so we need to Make sure you cut on the on the white line. We still need to make our connection to the touchpad. <clears throat> so again, we'll tin both of these. And with that done, what I like to do is not solder that in right away. Um, we want to be sure that these line up. These long arms uh, make it a little bit more difficult to line up. But we're still lining up based on the holes. So what I like to do is take and line up one side, hold it. And you could either put a little piece of tape or I'm just going to put a little hot glue here. To help hold that in place. And do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure that your tape or hot glue is away from where the connections are made at least halfway up the uh, the arm here. So now that's not going to move and we can just make our solder connection to the touchpad in the middle. Okay. So with that done, we can flip it over and close it back up. Again, we don't want to forget about our touchpad. And we'll put our screw back in. Alright, so again we'll do the same thing, we'll just put a little dab of hot glue and flip our mod over making sure the LED is along the edge. Alright, just like that. And again We'll make our connections for R3 and L3.
Okay, so there's our R3 and L3 connections made. And again, this is completing the installation for the, the basic installation. But on this one, we'll go ahead and we'll install one button. We'll install our mod button, so that's going to use these two connections right here in the middle that uh, are labeled RF. So what we want to do is put our button in the controller first. So the placement of the button is really up to you, but you want to stay out of this center area. This is where the battery sits. So anywhere in there, your button really is not going to fit. So uh, common places, it's actually kind of right in the corner of this, air, this button um, or up here to the top uh, below the trigger or in the, in the sides of the handle. So in the sides of the handle is where we would normally put the reflex buttons. That gives you uh, your middle finger there, a good position for pushing those buttons for jumping, crouching, whatever. And then we'll normally put the, the mod button out of the way, so either in this position here or, or up here. So I'm going to show you putting it right in this position, which basically puts it right at the center of this label on the edge. Uh, to do that though we need to remove this little bit of plastic so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and remove that plastic and to make the hole for our button we need a 1 8 inch drill bit So we'll take our drill, and you could either go from the outside or the inside. If you want to be sure of the exact placement, you can go from the outside. So I'm just putting it right on the edge of that label in the center. It doesn't take a whole lot. There's our hole. And uh, we'll take a countersink like this just to put it in there spin it around a few times to help clean up the edges of that hole on the inside and the outside all right so now we will take our button this button has two sets of legs on it we actually only need one of those, so we're just going to bend off one set. So they're on this, the same side of the button. We're just taking back and forth a few times, bend those right off. So now I just have one set of legs on there, like that. When we put the button in this way, you kind of want to direct it away from the center just so we don't get in the way of the battery again and basically place it in there we'll hold it in place with our screwdriver and put some hot glue around it While it's in there, you might want to push the button just to make sure that it's working. Alright, so while that glue is drying, we can come back to our controller. We will tin these two pads. And with our pads tinned there, even our button a little chance to dry we'll go back to our button take and bend these two legs down and we will tin those as well OK, 
Okay. And take two longer pieces of wire for our button. It really doesn't matter which color or which wire goes to which pad. All we're doing is closing a contact. Let me do this one at a time. Okay, so now we have wires on each leg of that button. Take a little more hot glue over the top of those just to make sure they stay in place. And we are going to want to take and run those to our controller. So basically we take our controller, put it somewhere close where our wires will reach. And solder them to these two pads. Alright, like that. Now what you might want to do here also is just put a little hot glue over top of those wires. Not over the actual connection, but just the wires to hold them in place so they don't pull out. And again, if you wanted to install the reflex buttons, uh, which again can map any of the regular controller buttons, triangle, circle, X, square, uh, the triggers, D-pad. You would make your connections to these ones labeled M1 and M2. So we'll finish up by just putting our battery back in. And we must reconnect our ribbon cable from the back of the shell. That just pushes in. And now with our buttons, we just want to make sure that these wires don't get caught up on anything. So as you're closing it, maybe you want to twist them up a little bit to keep them out of the way. Put it back together, put your screws in, and you're ready to go. So if you guys have any questions, you can email us through our website. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. We do offer, also offer these wholesale. So if you're looking to mod controllers to resell, uh, we're happy to help you out with that with some discounts on larger quantities. Again, it's Chris with Console Customs, and that was the installation of our True Fire Flex version 4. Thank you.